make a whole lot of sense. I guess the idea is that she's way in over her head, but they establish that she can be really smart. And a smart person wouldn't constantly need someone to save her. She could probably take care of herself. By doing this, she becomes less of a character and more of an annoyance. You just want to say, dude, don't go in there. You know what's going to happen. Take the hint. This also makes her maybe a little bit too reliable on Superman. For someone so smart and independent, she sure is willing to just throw herself for him, isn't she? They even poke fun of how many times Superman rescues her. You just hold on that little lady and uh, he'll be along. Miss Lane. Lane? Lois Lane? The one Superman always saves? Afraid so. Huh? At least with April, you sort of knew she was greedy and probably deserved what was coming to her. On top of that, she served as the hero's means to interact with the human world. Lois's job just seemed to be to get caught, and then report on it. I admire later versions for trying to make her more three-dimensional, but maybe that just makes her stupider. I hate to say, I've gotten used to it. Number 5. Jubilee. She's very similar to Robin in that she was supposed to represent the younger crowd who watched the story. And for a while, she did. In the first few episodes, she actually does have some real good lines. Get down! <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of choice. I mean, sure, she got caught a lot, but she was starting out, too. But by the time the first season went by, not only was she getting caught a lot, but she was a whiner. Are you blind? Is this gonna take long? What is your problem? He's on our side! With Robin, you sort of knew he was dead on arrival. You know he's never gonna connect with a younger crowd dressed like that. And plus, a grown man hanging out with a little kid? Kind of creepy. But Jubilee, despite also having a weird wardrobe, had a better chance of connecting because she was part of a group. And on top of that, it was a group of rebels, which every kid loves and relates to. So that's why it really sucks that she became such a third wheel. We wanted to feel like that kid who was part of the team, but she mostly just complained until somebody would come along and save her. And we didn't want that representing us. We wanted to fight right alongside them, not be saved all the time. I don't recall her being too much better in the comics, but at least she did have a few more kick-ass scenes. In the show, however, her power is about as effective as... A spray can! Yeah. What else can you say but... Does a mall baby chili fries? That. Number four. Scrappy Doo. Oh my god, I hate this little turd. This was Scooby-Doo's... I don't know, nephew, cousin, weekend son, I have no idea, but he was annoying as hell. He would always act tough and rush into situations thinking he could save the day. But of course, he's the size of an eight ball, so physical violence is probably not going to help you here. Let me at him! Let me at him! Naturally, Shaggy and Scooby had to go in and rescue him every time he threw himself into peril. Yeah, you're making these guys look brave! Come on, Uncle Scooby! da 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 his voice was annoying, the character was annoying, the fact that he never shuts up was annoying, GOD HE WAS ANNOYING! Oh, and did I forget to mention his annoying catchphrase? Ha 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 ha! Puppy power! Oh, God. First the Pound Puppies movie, now this? When are you gonna learn that catchphrase isn't gonna catch on? Scrappy Cappy Go! If I ever see a dog like him crossing the street, I'm stepping on the gas. Because the sooner I can eradicate this little bitch from being anybody else's problem, the better. I'm Scrappy Doo! <laughs> Number three. Jar Jar Binks. As if I even need to go into much detail. He cemented himself as one of the most annoying characters in all of cinema. But on top of that, he always has to have his ass saved as well. Even when they first meet him, they have to rescue him from something. That's a good introduction. You saved my again. What's this? A local. I think the most I've ever seen him do in these movies is lead them to where the underwater city is. That's it. Everything else is either getting himself in trouble or getting other people in trouble. And then, somehow, this guy actually gets a position of government. Though I guess that makes sense, saying nothing but garbage, being terrified of people, and yet never listening to what they have to say. Yep, yeah, that adds up. And I guess I'll point out what everyone else has as well. If Jar Jar was never put in power, then the Emperor never would have made his clone army and everything wouldn't have gone to shit. So, yeah, everything that goes wrong in the following movies, you can totally blame on Jar Jar. What else 
do I even need to say about him? His voice sucked, the character sucks, he can't take care of himself, and he doomed all the galaxy. Fuck him! I spec! The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. No. Number two. Princess Peach. I could punch this broad in the face. Really, I could. How many times has this whore been kidnapped? Haven't they upped the security yet so that it doesn't happen anymore? And every time it does happen, she just keeps her pretty little smile. Tee -hee, fuck you, bitch. I'm risking my life for you for the 20th fucking time. And don't you dare insult me by saying you're gonna bake me a cake. No, no. You give me a position of power, you fucking bimbo. I know more about this kingdom than you do. You see, I've been through it like a million times. You can't even stay around long enough to remember what it's called. I'm running the show now, Peach! I'm running the show! I don't know. I think it's just the attitude. The fact that she has no problem that you have to save her all the time. It just never seems to phase her. She never seems to feel bad. In fact, listen to this note that they have in the Mario Brothers Wii game. Dear Mario, because of my most recent kidnapping... RECENT KIDNAPPING?! What is this, just another day at the store for you? It doesn't even phase you anymore! You go out there and risk your life, whore! It ain't easy! The other thing that annoys me is just that she never does anything. She just smiles and gets caught. That's it. Oh, wait, there was Mario 2 where she could friggin' fly in the air. That was really cool. But guess what? That was a dream! It never happened. So that literally means she has contributed nothing in any of the Mario games. Okay, you got Smash Brothers and Mario Party and so forth, but come on. They're just go-karting and playing games. Hell, she uses a frying pan as a weapon. A frying pan and her butt. These are what women in the 40s use as weapons. Are you fucking serious? Next you'll be telling me her main weapon in the game is crying. I hate you. Princess Peach, if you still want to save her after all this, well, you'll have plenty of opportunities. Now I know what you're thinking. How can I possibly top Princess Peach, one of the most famous damsels in distress of all time? Well, believe it or not, there is actually one worse. Who could it possibly be? Let's take a look. And the absolute biggest dumbass in distress is... Bella from Twilight. This has to be the most selfish, male-dependent, uncaring, manipulative, self-centered, pretentious, idiotic, whining little bitch bag you will ever see in your entire life. And honestly, that wouldn't be too bad character. It'd be very, very interesting if it was intentional. But it's not. Bella is supposed to represent the everyday teenage girl. If that's the case, then the story really got mixed up who the blood-sucking monster is. She thinks she's tortured even though really she has no problems. She gets a crush on a boy and decides she wants to marry him, even though she's not even out of high school yet. She wants to be turned into a vampire, which everyone has said is throwing her life away. But of course, at the enlightening age of 17, she already knows exactly what she wants. Aren't you glad you followed through with every bright idea you had at 17? Aren't you glad you totally committed to something that you knew you could never make a mistake on at that age? Oh yeah, 17! Nobody ever fucks up at that age! The boyfriend tries to leave her so that he can save her, but she constantly keeps throwing herself off cliffs and putting herself in danger just so he can notice her. Good. Fucking. God. That's right, girls. If your boyfriend leaves you, do exactly this. I assure you it won't backfire in the least. Sure, you might be dead, but that'll teach him. She then gets another boy involved, who actually seems supportive and attentive, but she dumps him because the other guy looks at her weird. And by God, how can she turn down a guy with no personality that just looks at her weird? Again, one of those brilliant choices you make at 17. So now a whole war is going on, all because of her. And everyone is going out of their way to try and protect her, and she's simply like, Yeah, that's cool. Oh wait, she does try to say once that she's not worth it, but that only lasts a few seconds. She then realizes that she is worth it, and is totally on board with having muscle boys carry her around everywhere. And just as her boyfriend finally agrees to marry her, imagine a boy being pressured into marriage. She dicks around with the other guy yet again. Oh my god. I mean, oh my god. I have never seen a character more needy and more insecure. She is such a dumbass in distress that it's actually kind of scary. 
She is a scary character. In another dimension, maybe she could have been a great Shakespeare villain. This really complex, developed, psychotic mind. But as the common, everyday, relatable girl that we're all supposed to identify with, she is, and always shall be, the biggest dumbass in distress. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and pray for these boys, people.